So our next presentation uh, offers a commentary on mitigating flood risk and roof drainage and also looks at the recent changes in roof drainage in the MRM code of practice and how they relate to E1 AS1 and E2 AS1. Our presenter today, uh, Victoria Alvin, is the Specification Manager of Roofing uh, for Steel and Tube Holdings, and she works closely with Tony Rallis, who's the Technical Manager of uh, Roofing. Victoria and Tony support architects and designers in their specifications and design with uh, Steel and Tube Roofing and Cladding. And Victoria, good afternoon. Uh, you're, joined today, you're joined today with um, Rod Newbold, who knows a thing or two about the code of practice. Yes, indeed. This is uh, Rod Newbold, the editor for the Metal Roofing Code of Practice. Uh, and so he wrote this section for the Code of Practice. So I thought it'd be great to have him with us today to, oh, he's got all the background data for any questions that people might have that would get really deep about design. So great to have the originator of that material. Let me just share my screen and I'll get them. Uh, hold on. Perfect. Well, Victoria and Rod, great to have you here. And look. Look, look forward to learning more about gutter design. I'll just get rid of the pole off my screen. So as I said, I've got Rod Newbold with me today. He wrote this section for the Code of Practice. He's the middle, uh, editor for the Middle Roofing Code of Practice. So today we're going to talk about gutter and downpipe design, specifically referring to the Code of Practice calculator and relating that back to E1 AS1 and E2 AS1. So I'll just run through some slides. We have lost control of our screen. Rod, what has happened to our computer? We've lost computer you want control. You the right one, Daniel. Oh, Matt, we are having the IT issues from hell today. We're not um, able to shell. Here we go. Okay, so Steel and Tube is one of the leading providers of steel solutions. We are a New Zealand company. We're wholly owned by our shareholders. 35 branches around the country, 900 employees. Basically, we supply steel for your projects from the ground up. So from reinforcing through to confloor, that's the composite floor system. Uh, I think it's 93% of the rebuild in Christchurch, two stories and above, has got confloor in that building. And that's because it performs so well seismically. The purlins, the roofing and cladding, which is dear to my heart, and the nuts and bolts. So we're there from the ground up. Some of our projects that we have, this is the Bray, uh, done in our profile plum deck, which is a residential profile, very cost effective, as cost effective as corrugate, so it's super. A strong trapezoidal profile, ST900, being used here with the architectural designer series colour, Kofi Glow on the Freeman Space School, so it gives you that great line. ST963, a wide spanning commercial profile in colour steel bounce, which is, uh, aids us with heat in this building. It's a 4.5 metre span that this will take, uh, very wide, but used here on the Bullendale project in Queenstown. It's getting a new lease of life, emulating the standing seam style, but a very wide commercial profile, 963 mils wide. Euroline is a traditional standing seam. So Euroline has the wide flat pans and a plywood substrate, no visible fastener details, super clean lines. And its sister product, Legacy, is a, a more economical version of a product that emulates a standing seam. It doesn't need a plywood substrate, so it's very cost effective, uh, used here on a house and a wall cladding. But this is the new matte colours from New Zealand Steel. On the left, you've got Tidal Drift, and on the right, you've got Flax Pod Matte, and this was Legacy being used on the Kingsland Fire Station renovation. And finally, the sister product legacy is High Rib. It's the same profile, but it's got a swage in it, which makes it so attractive for MOE, residential, light -like commercial work. So uh, our topic today is talking about roof drainage. And it's worth noting that the code of practice is an alternative solution. Uh, normally we're trying to use an acceptable solution wherever we can for our building projects, but the code of practice is an alternate solution, but it's more, it's more conservative than the uh, acceptable solution, so we think it will still apply. It's more of a scientific solution to roof drainage calculations. So why are we looking at this section today? Well, we want to future-proof our designs. So in 2014, uh, 2014 uh, Becker climate change scenarios are projecting that our rainfall is going to go from 92.7 millimetres, and it's sitting behind my pole screen here, I'm just going to move that, to 103 millimetres. 
By 2065, the 10 minute rainfall intensity is predict, uh, predicted to go to 124 millimeters. So where our rainfall intensity is increasing all the time. The expectation for an increase in extropical cyclones is thought to be stronger. We're going to get more damage due to heavy rain and storm and damage, more storm intensity damage and local wind extremes. And we're seeing this in other design factors already where buildings are being designed to higher wind factors than they're currently experiencing. There. Uh, sorry, there we go. So firstly, we're going to look at our average return interval. So the building code says that buildings must have less than a 2% probability of flooding. So normally we'd be using rainfall intensity uh, with a return interval of 50 years for that. The code of practice is a very conservative document in this area. E1AS1 is going to use a 10 year return interval. The code of practice is going to use 50 year figures. Now, if you look at the diagram below, that difference can be almost 40% depending on some location. So it's interesting that the code of practice is more conservative using 50 year figures. We're also going to look at the short term rainfall intensity. So intensity varies greatly over a 10 minute period and roof drains can overflow quickly uh, when the demand exceeds capacity. E1AS1 uses the maximum intensity over a 10 minute period. We tend to use a two minute intensity for commercial work. That's about how long it takes rain to travel 25 meters on a three degree pitch. We'll use a uh, one minute rainfall intensity for residential work. Now that one minute rainfall intensity can be as much as 4.2 times higher the 10 minute intensity. So the code of practice is going to use a multiplying factor. It's going to convert the 10 minute intensity to a one and two minute intensity and give us a more proof design if you like. Just to put that in a visual idea for you, this is out of the code of practice and it's talking about comparing that 10 minute intensity with one or two minute intensities. And I'll just explain it. So this is the median line. Uh, the box represents the upper and lower quartile, and this is the total range. So that one or two minute intensity or one minute intensity is 4.2 times the 10 minute intensity on that front. So the code of practice um, is going to take those short term or 10 minute intensities and apply a short term intensity multiplier to bring them into a shorter term intensity. So you'll see here when we look at um, the gutter design, the internal residential gutters have got a multiplier of 3.1. Uh, the commercial gutters have got a multiplier of 2.2. Um, that's because our rain tends to take two minutes to travel. Um, the designers can opt to increase this. So these are the minimums that are set, but they can be altered up when you can play with these factors in your design as well. The code of practice is going to offer more design criteria options. Advice was taken from OPUS to publish their own solutions. They are consistent with the Australia New Zealand standard 3500, but they use worksheets to simplify the calculations contained in that standard. So today we're going to touch on gutter fall, freeboard, valleys, updated rainfall data, and gutter shapes. So let's get into that. So in terms of gutter fall, the code of practice allows you to calculate the capacity of your internal gutters, it allows you to change the different degrees of fall so you get an idea of how that's going to affect your capacity for your design. When we're looking at E1 AS1, there's no minimum fall for gutters, but E2 AS1 says the minimum fall must be 1 to 100. And the code of practice has a minimum fall of 1 to 500, so it enables you to play with that capacity as we're saying. For internal gutters, the code of practice recommends uh, a 1 to 200 fall as it's going to help with drainage and self-cleaning. And you can see that in the diagram below that you get a much better uh, roof area drainage. In terms of freeboard, I know this is a, a, a table here. There's a lot of information in it, but I'll talk you through because it's really interesting looking between the code of practice, E1 and E2, and how they deal with freeboard. Um, Code of practice in E2 will both say that we can have 20 millimetres freeboard on an internal gutter, whereas E1, if you have no freeboard on your internal gutter design, E1 will still accept it as a solution. External gutter with overflow, zero millimetres for the code of practice, E1, and it's not discussed in E2. External gutter without overflow, 
Well, we need a 15 millimetre free board or recommend, recommendation is a 15 millimetre free board from the code of practice. It's not discussed in E1, it's not allowed in E2. And for valleys, we want a, for, uh, valleys greater than eight degrees, we want a 15 millimetre free board for the code of practice. For less than eight degrees, we want a 20 millimetre free board where it's not discussed or not allowed in the other two. So it's really interesting to see the free board differences between them. For external gutter, the code of practice is going to give us options for external gutters with or without overflow, and it's going to allow us to calculate the wetted area on water flow. Was there a comment there, Will? No. No? Sorry. I can hear him breathing beside me. Okay. <laughs> In terms of valleys, the code of practice allows us to look at custom-sized valleys, solutions for less than 8 degrees, catchment areas in excess of 25 metres squared for pitches greater than 8 degrees. And we can vary our downpipe capacities according to the rainfall intensity of the location. We have the option to design them with or without overflows, all within that same calculator. It's really interesting with regard to rainfall. Uh, E1AS1 doesn't give us any data for rainfall intensity less than 100 millimetres per hour, but there are definitely parts of the South Island that have a rainfall intensity of less than 60 millimetres per hour. So the code of practice actually gives us the ability to calculate that capacity in areas where that rainfall intensity is less than 100 millimetres per hour. And unlike E1, we can actually calculate the effect of corners or length of run on water flow as well, which is very cool. So the code of practice has got an interactive worksheet that we can use to calculate our roof area drainage capacity and then play with it to get the figures we want. Now, the code of practice is a very organic, dynamic document. It changes frequently. My recommendation would be do not download a copy and hold it on your PC. It will be out of date very, very quickly. Use the link and always get it from an online source and then you've always got the most up to date one. And this is actually a really good point here because right here we're going to enter our site address into the capacity calculators and very shortly we're about to change the code of practice to have the site address and the name for your project. And that's because you can download um, the data that you're putting in here electronically and attach it to your consent to go through to the council, or you can print it and attach it to your consent. And so by having the name added into it, it makes it a better document to go through to council on that front. So always, always, always download it on that front. So we're going to enter in our site address, and then we're going to choose the gutter details that we want. And then we need to obtain our rainfall data. So there's several sources for this information. We want a 50 year, 10 minute rainfall intensity. Now the data from E1 AS1, their rainfall intensity maps are from July, 1992. And they look like so, uh, not so easy to read in terms of contour lines. They don't have place names for the smaller towns and they're only for a 10 year period. There is supposed to be a change to the um, the building updates that will give us some new tables that will have 250 towns listed with their rainfall data, which is quite good if your town's one of those 250. Uh, your other option is to look at the code of practice rainfall intensity maps, and these are for a 50 year period. So E1 AS1 was for a 10 year period. These are for a 50 year period, easier to read because they're color coded, more place names on them, easier to see which side of the line is your uh, rainfall data. But the best out of the bunch is using HERDS, the High Intensity Rainfall Design System. And they have a 50 year, 10 minute rainfall intensity. So we can get this data from the HERDS website. There's the address there, and we'll follow that through. So we're going to enter our site address. Um, the green dot on the screen there is for 30 Business Parade North Highbrook, which is the Steel and Tube Auckland address. So I've used that. We're then going to click intensity and generate report, and we will have our 50 year data at 127 mils for 10 minutes. So we can take that data and come and pop it back into our calculator. And then we're going to enter in the factors around our gutter design that we require. Is it a commercial gutter, residential, external, internal overflow, and so on. And that will come out with the short term intensity multiplication factor that is the minimum set for the, pre the factors you put in there. So in terms of design, you can increase that uh, 
Perhaps if you feel that the option of a 50-year flood is too much of a risk for your project, you could increase that intensity factor. You cannot reduce it below this level, and it will change according to the factors that you put in. So then we can enter our gutter shape in. Rectangular gutter, manufacturer's data according to what you're using, and we can enter in the fall of our um, gutter as well. 1 to 500 is the default. It can be increased up to 1 to 100. Again, it's up to you to play with your design to get the capacity you want. And finally, we can come in and put in the next stages. Do you have any bends in this? You can add those in. You can add your gutter length, your width, uh, your gutter upstand, your freeboard requirements, and so on. And really personalize the design, and you will have the capacity that pops out at the bottom there for that section. Now, if that capacity isn't adequate, it's not going to work for your design, you can go back and rerun the calculator and play with some of that data. For example, you could, uh, instead of using the regular gutter sizes of uh, 175 or 300 for a commercial job, you could change those dimensions and make them larger to accommodate your capacity that you need. So very usefully, the site details and soon to be the name details it will be retained when the downpipe and valley uh, tabs are subsequently se uh, selected so you don't need to add the rainfall data across there and as i've said you can print these or electronically add them to your consent application which is really useful and again it's a dynamic document for the code of practice so soon to be added is a worksheet to work with the catchment areas above the penetration so you can determine the discharge and so on on that too. And that'll be really useful. Thank you, Rod. I look forward to that. For the information that you need to enter into the calculator, you can go to Steel and Tube, uh, www.steelandtube.co.nz for our specifiers for roofing and cladding. We have the rainwater systems for the North Island and the South Island. The BIM data is there in Revit and DWG to make life easy. And the information looks like so on those catalogs, which gives you the information you need to add into that calculator if you are going to redesign these gutters to carry more capacity as well. Uh, we do have our technical helpline. You've got myself that you can email. You've got Tony Rellis that you can email and contact. And we are a master specs part partner. So as you're working through your specification for uh, roofing, cladding, or rainwater goods in this instance, you can click on the work section support It'll email us your spec, we'll have a look at it, make some comments, send it back, and you can choose to accept our comments or not, <laughs> according to whatever you may like. So that's the end of our presentation. At this point, I'll throw open Matt and um, I'll let Rod take the floor for questions as it's his yeah. section. Thank you for your time. Cool, thanks, Victoria. Good recovery there, <laughs> well done. Oh. Uh, feels like you, you, you covered uh, covered a lot there, so uh, excellent work. Now, just got a few questions here just to cover off. Uh, first, when you're talking about the uh, catchment um, design, what if the standard 300 or 175 gutter is not providing the capacity that the project requires? Uh, the, those gutter sizes are actually um, can be very easily altered. These products aren't roll form, they're folded. So they can be made in any, any shape, uh, dimension you want. Um, and the brackets are just folded brackets. So it's, it's not cost prohibitive to change any dimension on those gutters. The ideal, the optimum dimension is the width is twice the height of the back or the height of the back could be half the width plus freeboard. Okay. Okay, that's good, thank you. Um, what's the effect of roof pitch on the calculations? Uh, we've we've uh, done it the, uh, different to E1, which has different um, capacities for roof pitches, because they're working on the plan area of the roof, not the plain area of the roof. So they're working on the area of the um, flat surface covered by the roof, but they don't take walls into account and uh, a wall doesn't have any plan area. So we use the run of the roof as the calculation and the worst case scenario is that the rain's hitting it at right angles. And also walls should be taken into account and that's 50% of the wall area adjacent or draining onto that roof up to a height of 10 metres should be added to your plan area, uh, your catchment area. Okay, okay. 
And uh, just a follow-on question: How would wall area drainage on a roof be calculated? Well, that's that's it. As I as I just said, it's ignored in E one. Um, but look, it's a it's a real it's a real thing. So half the area of wall up to a height of yep. ten meters should be added to the roof if it's okay. draining onto the roof. Yep. Uh, got another question here. Um, be an alternative design method. Is there a producer statement provided by Steel and Tube? Or has Auckland Council accepted the design methodology without a PS1? It's actually more conservative than E1 AS1, so you, you will get a consent because you're still complying with E1 AS1. If all you care about is a consent, uh, use E1 AS1 by all means, but if you want your building not to leak every 10 years, definitely uh, suggest you use the code of practice, particularly for things inside the envelope, the uh, internal gutters, valleys, and later on uh, discharge around penetrations. Okay, we um, thank you, Marcel. I hope that uh, covers your question there. Um, I'm just gonna share the results of our poll from earlier, uh, Victoria and Rod. So we asked the question, have uh, you experienced problems with internal gutters? Um, so we've got 60% saying yes, 40% saying no. Any comments on that? Is that what you no normally normally find when you're uh, canvassing this with architects and specifiers? Well, a lot of a lot of specifiers say they won't design internal gutters because they always leak, and, and that's because according to E1, they're, they're designed to leak. So I think the the code of practice lets people make better design decisions. And they also got the option to increase that multiplier if they can't tolerate a 50 year for uh, storm causing a leak, they can increase that multiplier. Okay, uh, rather than continue with questions, we think we need to respect everyone's time. The market's busy at the moment. So I um, wanna thank uh, you all for your, your time presenting information and to everyone out there uh, tuning in. Thank you again for um, your time today. Nice to see you all, and um, everyone enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Sue. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, guys. Bye.